living in sunny Los Angeles, California. By day, I was working as a part-time teller at Bank of America, cashing checks and making deposits for other people. By night, I was trying to make it as a professional DJ in Hollywood, working nights and weekends. I had a degree in international studies from UC Irvine, but I had little to no work experience and it's not exactly a degree that's high in demand. So I decided to go back to school and get a degree in computer science. It's not like how it is today where there are boot camps everywhere and you just do one of those for three months and you have a job lined up. Those weren't really a thing back then, but if I were starting out again today, I would definitely go the boot camp route because it probably would have been a hell of a lot easier than getting a degree. But I also feel like I am a stronger developer today because I decided to go the degree route. At the time, I had no idea where to start. So I searched on Google and I read that C++ is the best language to learn because once you learn that, you can pretty much learn any other language. And for the most part, I still agree with that statement. So I went on YouTube and I searched C++ tutorials and the only big channel back then was the new Boston. So I spent the next several weeks watching intro to C++ classes and I immediately fell in love with coding. Everything just immediately clicked for me and it really gave me the confidence that this is something that I could and wanted to do. But there were still a lot of question marks. Am I smart enough to do this? How much will everything cost? What if I put in all this time and work and I don't end up getting into any schools? I literally had no backup plan, but I think that this helped me. Knowing I had no choice but to succeed really lit a fire under me and pushed me to try my best. And hey, as long as I tried my best, even if it didn't work out, at least I'll know that it wasn't meant to be. 2014, going all in. This is when I decided to stop dabbling and start dominating. I quit my job at the bank and moved back to the Bay and started taking classes at a local four-year university. I looked at what classes you needed to get into grad school and I started taking all those at the university. So things like computer architecture, operating systems, data structures, as well as all the required math classes like calculus, linear algebra, probability, discrete math. Summer of 2014, I took the GRE after about two months of studying. I ended up at around 80th percentile in the math portion and did average on the verbal and writing. Luckily, schools only care about the math part. So after the GRE, I had to chase down professors for letters of recommendation, write my statement of purpose, get transcripts from every college I've ever taken a class at, filling out all my applications for grad school, all while trying to maintain a high GPA. But after applications were done, I could just focus on school. And at that point, it was just playing the waiting game to see where I got in. Two thousand fifteen, I made it. Kinda. In March of twenty fifteen, I was accepted into the Masters of Computer Science program at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. At this point, I was on top of the world. It was my top choice when applying. Their CS program was one of the best in the state. The city of San Luis Obispo is one of my favorite cities. However, before I started, I decided to test my skills by joining my first hackathon. I was uh, quickly humbled. I joined a team of people that I had never met before. We decided to use a tech stack of MongoDB, Ruby on Rails, and I think jQuery on our front end. And I had never worked in either of those tools. I had never been built out a web application, so I could hardly contribute. If you've never done a hackathon, basically you get paired with a team to build out some sort of application and you have a couple days to do it. They can be pretty exhausting because they're usually all day. Some of them are overnight, which I don't recommend doing. At the end, you showcase your project and you can win prizes. If you've never done one, I do recommend trying it out. I've done a couple, but I probably won't do any more just because they're pretty draining. In September of 2015, I finally moved to San Luis Obispo, completed my first quarter of grad school. I do have a video of all the classes I took while I was at grad school, so I'm not gonna go in depth with it here, but you guys can check that out if you're curious. The highlight of this year was my Amazon internship. They sent me to Portland to help out with a company called Elemental, which they had acquired the year before. This was the first time I experienced imposter syndrome. I was looking at the list of all the other interns and seeing that they went to schools like MIT and Berkeley, and uh, it was a little intimidating. But I almost immediately noticed that all the other interns were in the same boat as me. I remember even starting out, like the other two interns that I was with didn't know how to use the command line and I was like showing them how to do stuff. 
During the internship, I helped build a proof of concept for a new software as a service application. I used Angular on the front end and AWS tools like Lambda, API Gateway, and DynamoDB on the back end. I also learned the importance of gathering all your requirements before you start a project. Like they wouldn't even let me touch the code until I filled out a documentation explaining exactly what I was doing, how I was gonna do it, and a diagram of all the software components working together. So just seeing how that was done at a professional level and how meticulous they were was very eye-opening. 2017, the real world. So I finished grad school in June and I was fortunate enough to have a job lined up already. I started working for a company called Western Digital. If you know hard drives, you've definitely heard of them. I worked on the internal tools team. Basically, we managed 10 to 20 different websites within our team of about six to eight people. I was working in .NET, which I had never used before. Our tech stack was very SQL heavy, which is not one of my strong points. And we just had a lot of tech debt in our front end because we had like five different JavaScript frameworks amongst all our websites. Vue.js ended up being the JavaScript framework that I started using the most. But yeah, at this place, I was just kind of like thrown in the deep end and it was definitely a challenge to try and keep my head above water. There was no training. The people there didn't really want to help because they already had, their plates were already full. My manager was never around, so it was just kind of a mess. 2018, expect the unexpected. So at this time, even though I had graduated, I was still actually working on my thesis while I was working, which I don't recommend doing. But it did affect my work and eventually I was pipped, which I don't think I've ever mentioned on this channel, uh, but I do wanna be open. Um, if you don't know what that is, it's a performance improvement plan. They cited some work of mine like, oh, this feature took you a week and a half to implement when it should have taken you a week, which I don't know, where they got that number from. It seemed pretty arbitrary. I also had some coworkers throw me under the bus because I was asking them too many questions, which I don't know, it seemed kind of ridiculous. It was just a super toxic environment. And then I just couldn't trust my coworkers at any time. I couldn't ask them any questions because who knows when they were gonna go like tattletale to the manager. Once I finished my thesis and I had more time, I was able to start crushing it at work. So things started to cool down a bit. I was kind of just going through the motions. And in October of 2018, my boss called me into his office and informed me that I was being laid off. I'm not gonna get into it because I do have a video explaining the whole thing, um, but that was definitely a tough day for sure. So I really had to go back to the drawing board and try and get another job, which did end up taking a while. And at the time, I just wasn't sure if I was going to get hired again. So I wasn't really in a great spot. After dozens of interviews and lots of rejections, as well as the infamous Google story of me, of them telling me I was gonna get an offer and then having it taken away for no reason. Almost getting an offer from Amazon. I wasn't sure if I was gonna be working as a developer anymore. But in June, I landed a role at Berkshire Hathaway. Their tech stack was very similar to my previous role, so I was able to immediately come in and contribute. People there were super chill and laid back, kind of like me. So immediately I could tell it was gonna be a really good fit. So it seemed like things were finally getting back to normal until 2020 and 2021, the pandy. So something happened in 2020. I'm trying to remember. I can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, oh yeah, we went through a global pandemic. So we were forced to work from home. I honestly had no complaints. It saved me over two hours a day in commute time, not to mention the money I saved by not commuting. During these years, I mean, it was continuing to work on the same stuff I'd been working on. I learned React.js because we started a new project using that. And you guys may have seen my video learning React in seven days. I actually learned it for this project. During this time, I started to feel some burnout just from working eight hours a day and then also trying to produce content for the YouTube channel and just being in the same place all day um, started to take its toll. So in, in 2021, I really tried to focus more on my physical as well as my mental health because at the end of the day, those are the two most important things. 2022, next steps. You know, to this day, I still wonder what if. What if I had gotten that job at Google? I probably wouldn't have ever started YouTube if I had gotten a job at Google. So in a way, I'm, I'm kind of happy that it didn't work out. But I also tried not to focus on the what ifs because I feel like everything happens for a reason. So where am I at now? Well, I'm currently transitioning away from my role at Berkshire, which 
I will be making a dedicated video for because uh, I've got a story for you guys. But for now, I'm gonna be focusing on two things. The first is Keep On Coding Academy, which is a boot camp for coding interviews revolving around data structures and algorithms, which I'm really excited about. The other thing is this YouTube channel. I wanna get back into posting more frequent and more consistent content, and I should be able to now that I have more free time. The main thing I wanted you guys to get out of this video is that it's about the journey and not the destination. We often get this tunnel vision on our end goal. There's the 99 to 1% rule where we focus so much on that end goal, that 1% that we miss the 99%, which is the majority of the journey. When I got my degree, I mean, the graduation and all was great, but it was really the four years working towards that that allowed me to grow not only as an engineer, but as a person. The years after that, when I got the job and I started working and making money, those years were kind of boring. Uh, I've been happiest in my life when I was challenging myself or working towards a goal. The years where I was making the most money was actually were actually my unhappiest years. So moving forward, I decided that I'm not gonna be chasing money anymore. Um, I'm gonna be pursuing what I want and what makes me happy. Your goals might be different, but I will say I'd rather be happy in a two bedroom house than be miserable in a four bedroom house. So that's just some food for thought for you guys. So thank you to everyone who supported me throughout these 10 years and um, here's to the next 10 years. So thank you guys so much for watching and as always, keep on coding.